Okay, we're going to be talking about tangent lines and how they relate to circles. First, we need to discuss common tangents, and that's simply a line or a segment tangent to two circles in the same plane. And there's two different kinds. We have a common external tangent, and those are tangents that do not intersect the segment whose endpoints are the centers of the circle. So you see these two red tangent lines, and we have this segment that joins the circle, and they're not crossing those. So it kind of is how, it, how it's described. They're external. They're on the outside of the circles. Versus a common internal tangent line. Notice that on both of these that the red tangent lines are tangent to both of the purple circles, but they crisscross in the middle. All right, so those are what we call internal tangents. So let's look at some tangent lines here. All right, so let's get our line tool. So I could draw tangent here, tangent here. Let's pretend that that's a tangent. But also, I've got those are two external tangents, and then I've got one internal tangent right there. Okay, so notice each of these lines touches each circle once, and um, and that this one is the only one that crosses those uh, center line. All right, in this one, I would have those two external tangents. All right, but I can't draw an internal tangent. If I try to draw a line like this, then that's not really a tangent line. That's a secant line because it's crossing each circle twice. So we can't use that one. All right, so this one only has two. All right, and this one, again, there's only an external tangent, and that's really the only one I can draw. I can't draw anything else out here because it wouldn't be a common tangent. Like if I drew one out here, that's not uh, tangent to this inner circle. So this one only has one common tangent. All right, and then here's some more examples. Like here we have a circle completely inside of the other circle. And now I really can't draw any. Any tangent to that smaller circle would be a secant to the other one. So this one has no common tangents. And this is one that, like uh, the one we were using in our definitions on that first page. We have those two common external tangents, and then we'd have those two common internal tangents. Ah, those aren't very good drawn very well. Try to fix them. There we go. That's a little bit better. Let's try to fix this one. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. All right, so here we've got four common tangents going on in that picture. All right, so those are common tangents. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, Inspire CX, the, and I'm going to use the software on my computer. And I'm going to show you just we're going to discover some things about tangents in a circle. So if we look at this, here is a secant line, and we know it's a secant line because it has these two intersection points, B, B and P. And no matter where I put this, see, I'm going to move this all around. Um, as, no matter where I move that line, it's still a secant line. The only time it becomes a tangent is when B and P are on the same exact thing. So I don't know if you notice this, that all of a sudden this angle right here became 90 degrees. Do you see that? So if I keep it a secant, those can be very different angles. Notice that AB is a radius. And as long as it's a secant, it can be all those different kinds of angles. But the minute I make it a tangent, it becomes 90 degrees. So you can see that here, this line is constructed to stay a tangent, and no matter where I put that tangent, that angle stays 90 degrees to the radius. Okay, so that's the next thing we need to write in our notes, is that if we have a line tangent to a circle, um, it has to be perpendicular to the radius of the circle at the end point here, at point P. 
Okay, so make sure if you need to pause that to write that down, please do so. So let's use this for some examples. It's a very, very useful theorem because now I know if this is a tangent, TS is a tangent line, RS is a radius, and then according to our theorem that we just talked about, this has to be a right angle. So then if I wanted to find, um, see if this was indeed a right angle, then I could do Pythagorean theorem. So is 5 squared plus 12 squared. Now, this might be hard to see in this diagram, but 8 is only referring from here to here. And keep in mind, this is 5, right? So this whole distance right here has to be 13. So is 5 squared plus 12 squared equal to 13 squared? Yeah, I don't know if you remember that's a um, Pythagorean triple. But even if you don't remember, you can do the math and see that that does check out. All right, we can do the same thing here. Remember, be careful with your, with your labeling. Obviously, this whole thing is not 7. So they're talking about this is 12 and this is 7, just the outside portion. So if we want to figure out if that is tangent, then that has to be a right angle. So we would have to check to see if 12 squared plus 16 squared is equal to, remember this whole thing is going to be 19 squared. Okay, so this is 144. Let's see, 16 squared. Let's get out my calculator and see how much that is. So 16 squared is 256. And then 19 squared is 361. So is 144 plus 256, is that equal to 361? No. All right, so in this situation, even though this might look tangent, we would know for sure that it is not. Okay, so that's one way you can verify. You can also use that to help solve problems. So in this situation, we want to figure out what the radius of the circle is. And we have this segment and this piece. So we only have external measurements available to us. So keep in mind that in a, in a diagram like this, the radius is the same no matter where it's coming from. So we would have, if we know, want to know that this is a tangent, okay, and we're trying to find the radius. So we would know that r squared plus 77 squared is equal to this whole thing. We can't find the whole measurement, so we're going to just write 49 plus r parentheses squared. Okay, so remember, don't just square these two. We have to FOIL those out. So that means I'm essentially doing 49 plus R times 49 plus R. And if we do that, that would give us 49 times 49, which is 2401. We would have 49 times R and then another 49 times R. So that would be... 98 r and then we would have r squared okay so let's let's uh, that was just some side work, work so you can see how i'm going to get the next line in our solution so r squared can't do much with that i'm going to write this over here r squared i still have as r squared 77 squared is 5929 and then that's equal to 2401 plus 98R plus R squared. Now you might be thinking, oh no, I have R squared, I have to do quadratic. But do you notice how you have R squared on both sides? So you can subtract the R squared from both sides and they cancel. And so really all we're doing is a simple linear equation. So that's kind of nice. So we've got 59.29 minus 24.01, and that gives us 35.28, and then we're going to divide by the 98, and that gives us 36. So the radius of this circle is 36, and the reason we knew that is because we knew this was that point of tangency. 
All right, so that's a great way to use that theorem about tangents. So here's another one you can try on your own right now. You can pause the video and see if you can do that. I'm going to pause too and I'll do it and then uh, when you come back you can check your answer. Okay, so you can see that I got the radius to be 33. If you need to, pause and check my work and see if it matches yours. If not, let's just move on. So now we're going to go back to that Inspire document and look at some more things about tangents. So if we look at tangents that meet outside of the circle, so you see how um, BC is a tangent and BA is a tangent, but they both meet at this point B. And do you notice how AB is 6.93 centimeters and BC is 6.93 centimeters? And no matter where I move B, I move it close or far away, those values stay exactly the same. Okay, so that's an interesting result. And I want you to think about why that would happen. So I'll give you a hint. I'm going to show you some lines here. So AO is a radius, CO is a radius, and I drew in OB. So think about why would those blue lines have to always be the same? Okay, so answer, let me show you on this page. So we've got the same, same kind of diagram, and I have OA and uh, OC, those are both radii. And what do we know about radii? Well, they're always congruent, yes? And then we also have, from the previous theorem, that the tangent has to be perpendicular to the radius. So these are both perpendicular, and those are both congruent. Then, if I draw an OB, notice that I have now created two right triangles. And in these right triangles, I have this side, or the leg, is congruent, and then OB is, reflex, is reflexive, so it's congruent to itself, and that's the hypotenuse. So really, we're using hypotenuse leg to show that this triangle is congruent. Watch this. We're going to flip this over. So imagine that that triangle is 3D and flipping over and laying on top of the other one. So those two triangles are both congruent by HL, which means by CPCTC those two blue tangent lines have to be congruent. So let's write that in our notes then. That if we have tangents, tangent segments from a common external point, so that's, that's the kicker here, they have to come from the same point, that we know that they are congruent. Okay, so we can use that a lot. I kind of think this looks like either an ice cream cone or like a clown with a pointy hat on it. So that's, if you want to think of it that way. So we can use that to help us solve situations that look like that. So I know that this, these are two tangents coming from that common point Q, and we're trying to find the value of x, so these two would be congruent. So we would say 3x plus 5 is equal to 32. Subtract the 5, and that would give us 27 divided by the 3, and we get x equals 9, and that's what they want us to find. Let's look at another example. So here's a more interesting example. All right, so notice that we only have to, we can only use that congruence as long as they're coming from the same point. So these two would be congruent. And then these two are coming from this common external point. So these would be congruent. But notice that I'm doing a double mark. So the blue tick marks, those are not necessarily congruent to the red ones. And then same thing with this one over here. This is a common external point, so these two are tangents. But again, we don't know if they're congruent to the other tangents in the diagram. 
So to solve for x, y, and z, all we're doing is setting up three different equations. 2x plus 11 equals 3x minus 1. So subtract the 2x, add the 1, and we get x equals 12. All right, then I'm going to go to z. So I've got 2z is equal to 12, so that means z is equal to 6. And then we have 25 is equal to 6y minus 5. So then we've got 30 is equal to 6y, and then y is equal to 5. So you'll be doing a lot more examples with uh, tangent lines, so just be prepared to have these notes ready for those.